Welcome back, strangers. It is amazing that we live in a time where we can book a flight and travel across the world. Air travel is the closest thing we have to time travel, and when I was a kid, I was fascinated by flying. My grandfather was a pilot, and he always talked about how much fun it was to fly and be in control of where you were going. So, I grew up wanting to be a pilot instead of a firefighter, policeman, or other job that young kids are usually fascinated by. Frederick Valentich always dreamed of being a pilot, but he soon realized how difficult it is to make your childhood dreams a reality. He applied twice to the Royal Australian Air Force and was rejected because he did not meet their strict education requirements. However, he was determined to be a pilot and switched his focus to becoming a commercial pilot instead. He failed all five parts of his commercial pilot's license exam, twice. He was reprimanded for multiple flying incidents and was even threatened with prosecution for deliberately disobeying flight instructions. Yet, he kept studying and training to be a pilot. Fred accumulated 150 hours of flying time and was authorized to fly alone and at night in visual meteorological conditions. On October 21st, 1978, 20-year-old Fred left Victoria's airport in Australia at 6.19 p.m. He was piloting a rented single-engine Cessna headed for Kings Island over the Bass Strait. Shortly after sunset at 7 p.m., Fred radioed Melbourne Air Flight Services and spoke with controller Steve Roby. Here's a recording of their exchange. I recommend turning on the closed caption subtitles if you can't make out exactly what they're saying. This is Delta Sierra Juliet. Is there any known traffic below 5,000 feet? No known traffic. Seems to be a large aircraft below 5,000 feet. What type of aircraft is it? I cannot confirm. It's four bright, seems to me like landing lights. The aircraft has just passed over me at at least 1,000 feet above. Is there any Air Force aircraft in the vicinity? No known aircraft in the vicinity. Seems to be playing some sort of game. He's flying over me. Well, the Sierra Juliet, it's not an aircraft, it's... Can you describe the, uh, the aircraft? As it's flying past, it's a long shape. I cannot identify it, it has such speed. It's before me right now, Melbourne. How large would the, um, the object be? Seems like it's stationary. What it's doing right now is orbiting. The thing is just orbiting on top of me. It's also got a green light and a sort of metallic, like, it's shiny on the outside. It's just vanished. That strange aircraft's hovering on top of me again. It's hovering and it's not an aircraft. No one knows what Fred saw that evening. All contact was lost after a loud scraping noise came over the radio. Search and rescue alerts were sounded at 7.12 p.m. Sea and air searches encompassed a 1,000 mile radius over the course of seven days. However, no trace of the aircraft was found. An oil slick was discovered near the area where Fred was, but analysis proved it was not from aviation fuel. The cause of Fred's disappearance was unable to be determined, despite a Department of Transport investigation. The only conclusion was that it was a presumed fatal crash. Five years later, parts of an aircraft wreckage with partial matching serial numbers to Fred's Cessna were found in the base strait. Many theories and explanations have been proposed to determine what really happened that October evening. Fred's father said that his son was always fascinated by UFOs, alien movies, and abduction stories. Fred told his father he had witnessed a UFO before and was worried about what would happen if aliens attacked him or the Earth. Some have said that the incident may have been an elaborate suicide and or hoax for him to always be remembered by the UFO community. Fred's life wasn't going as planned. He was failing at one thing he loved, and suicide or faking his death to start over may have seemed like a viable option at the time. Those who believe he faked his death say that despite ideal conditions, Fred's aircraft was never plotted on radar in the location he claimed to be during his radio transmissions. Melbourne police did receive reports of a mysterious light aircraft landing in the area of land not too far from where Fred supposedly disappeared. Fred did follow proper procedure to inform King Island Airport of his intent to land there that evening. Even the reason for his flight is unknown. 
Fred told flight officials he was flying to go pick up some friends. However, none of his friends could confirm, because he told those close to him he was going to Kings Island to pick up crayfish. UFO enthusiasts speculated that Fred was either abducted by the UFO, or he was shot down by the unknown craft. Others did come forward and say they saw an unknown moving green light in the sky on that same night after the mass publicity the story received. However, UFO sightings have occurred in the same area years earlier. That evening, before radio contact with Fred was lost, plumber Roy Manaford was filming the sun setting over the shoreline with a time-lapse camera. When he developed the photos, an unknown object was captured exiting the water towards the direction Fred was traveling. These photos have been examined by countless experts, but the photos are not clear enough to conclude for certain what the object was. Skeptics have argued that the photos are just a perfectly timed coincidence, and that it is only a bee flying past the camera lens. Flight experts believe that Fred either became disoriented and began flying upside down, or he was deceived by the illusion of a tilted horizon. If he was flying upside down, then Fred was confusing the reflection of his own aircraft lights on the water as an unknown craft before he crashed into the water. He was a young and inexperienced pilot, and may have overcompensated when he experienced an optical illusion, causing him to inadvertently put his aircraft into a downward spiral. Other explanations for the unknown lights are the planets Venus, Mars, Mercury, and the bright star Antarest, which may have created an illusion of another aircraft, especially in the mind of someone with a wild imagination and a UFO obsession. Sometimes things we want most in life aren't meant to be. Fred wasn't meant to be a pilot. He was young, inexperienced, and struggled to grasp many of the basic concepts of flying. I know we don't all have our dream jobs that we wanted as kids. I used to want to be a pilot, but now hate flying and will only fly if it's not a reasonable place to drive when I'm traveling. Which I fortunately get to travel and film things for you all to watch and enjoy, which is awesome. When one door closes, another one opens. Thanks strangers for watching. What do you think happened to Fred the evening he disappeared? Did he witness a UFO? Was he abducted by aliens, or was he just a confused, inexperienced pilot who tragically crashed? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. Also, be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Your support helps us out so much. Be sure to check out our other social media, and as always, stay strange.